Batman the Edge Season 8, Episode 9. In this week's episode, we will be discussing a musician's upcoming song. That's right, we have a musician in the hot seat. And then we'll be reviewing, spoiler alert, so stick with us. We've broken this episode into chapters, so you can jump to your favorite part if you're busy. But now, on to the interview. Zoe Brisky, hailing from New York City, is one of the most exhilarating electronic pop artists of this generation. Musically, she synthesizes mainstream pop with an experimental electronic touch, invoking names like Charlie XCX and Halsey. Her clever and caring nature can be felt through her lyrics, which center around queer love and the discovery and empowerment of oneself. And might I point out, you should go to her TikTok as well, (laughs) because she's a huge (laughs) supporter of our LGBTQ community, especially the L section. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> All right. Zoe is self-built, self-funded, and entirely self-produced. She can be found touring worldwide. She's intoxicating to be around, unabashed in who she is, and unafraid to be herself both in life and in her music. Zoe also runs that TikTok I just mentioned, so please check her out. Zoe, welcome to the show. Hello. How are you doing? <laughs> doing well. <laughs> So I have to preface this by saying I went to Apple Music and listened to oh your God. offerings out there. Oh, my God, you're fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, my girl, God. I mean, Hedda Gobbler. Who would have thought? <laughs> I love that you brought that song up. Oh, my God. That, do you know? So let me tell you something. I have a tattoo of, like, so that's like a Henry Gibson play from 1890. And I have mm-hmm. a tattoo of his original handwriting like on my ankle and I mentioned this during a TikTok live the other day and then somebody read it and I was so excited. That's epic. <laughs> and they were like, I love that song. And I'm like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So obviously there's some classical training there if you're referencing. Yeah. Yeah. I went this. to NYU. <laughs> well, so I was going to ask, where did the fire start? Where did you decide to become this amazing artist? Um. Okay. So I guess... I guess it does actually, it might go back to NYU a little bit. I started writing songs when I was like 12, but I went to uh, NYU's music program for a summer and learned how to produce music and it completely changed my life. And that was when I was 15. And then I ended up going to the acting program for college, um, which totally different, but I was mainly into acting. I played shows. I guess I started playing my synthesizer live when I was like 17 Um, and then when I moved to New York city, I just would like play shows through college. And then after college, I got really seriously into it. I think that I started making music that like I genuinely loved probably like four or five years ago. Nice. Yeah. So you've got a song. I love that. It has kind of that Broadway kind of feel to it. Yeah. Yeah, It's like a (laughs) post-apocalyptic Broadway (laughs) show, you know, kind of thing, you know? (laughs) That's kind of the vibe of my concerts too. Like, I mean, oh, well, there you it, go. It's it's theatrical. <laughs> it is not. There like, you go. It's not ju- like you will hear stories. And everything's connected. And there's like musical interludes. Like, see, it's not well, a normal are. pop show. <laughs> yeah. Well, there you go. <laughs> and before knowing that history, when I was listening to your music, I noticed that each one told a story, which means yeah. you're a storyteller in song. Yeah, yeah, I try to be. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So what's the story? I, I, I do want to. I do want to say I have a suggestion for you. If you ever want to go off the beaten path with eloquence, you should try it. Oh my god! It, 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 <laughs> it lends itself to bagpipes, girl. It lends itself so well to bagpipes. I can't believe Can you I tell you? To that song. I like listened to that. I went, oh my god! If she did that live, that would be hysterical. Oh my god! That is like that's such a funny song that you mentioned too, because I feel like that actually is the one that connects. Mo- I feel like better than your boyfriend the song that's coming out is mm. like the better version of that song. oh okay there you go <laughs> because it, it like it has the same vibe where it's like um like i have better lines than she can dream it's like yeah I right right exactly right and it's like no i'm still better <laughs> But that musical track, that musical vibe in the background, it was like, I'm like, oh my God, that's like, you could be a bagpipe and do an acoustic version. That, you would, know? Be, that would be dope. Like, I'm not going to lie. That would be awesome. Just blow their minds and yeah. have a Scotsman walk out and you go. Do that for the encore. Like, just totally. There you go. There you go. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Epic. So let's talk about Better Than Your Boyfriend, which yeah. comes out this coming week. Yeah. Yeah. March 10th. Yeah. Yes. All right. So what was the inspiration behind it? Yeah. So. <laughs> and I've seen well, your TikTok. Well, obviously Eloquence so... 2.0. <laughs> <laughs> obviously it's Eloquence 2.0. Uh, yeah. So 
basically I started, okay, so I met this girl and that's how it always starts. And <laughs> right. normally, it was like, you know what I mean? So I met this girl and I re- like, I immediately, like, I've never, I've never like been one of those people that's like, oh yeah, love at first sight. But I literally like felt this string just like get ripped out of my soul <laughs> when I met this person in a good way. Um, and I just was like, <laughs> well, good. Really? You wanted it in a good way. <laughs> it, you yeah. wanted it. You wanted it in a good way. Yeah. So I was just, I was really into her. I was like, and we met because we're both musicians and we were put on a random bill at a show. And after the show, I went up to her and I was like, I'm in love with you. And she was like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> and I was like, no, like we should play shows together. And she was like, yeah, sure. But then like did not message me. So I kept messaging her. I asked her to go. I like get these like, you know, influencer experience things. So I asked her to go on this like cruise mate with me, whatever, around New York City. And she was like, that sounds like so much fun, but I'm not free that night. Thanks, though. And it was like one of those things that was like, just like she's a Gemini. So it was kind of like where it was like, yeah, like I'm excited about it, but I'm not going to follow up with you. And then I was like, you know what? I think I'm going to like book us a show. And then she has to like show up. And so I texted her and I was like, hey, there's this venue that I love in Brooklyn. They want to hire us. Right. Like and I texted like my friend that owns this bar and I was like, I really like this girl. Please like put in a good word for me. And I was like, we can like go see the venue. I don't know, like before or after. Like I was going to London at the time for a week to play shows. And I was like, we can go before or after I play a few gigs in London. <laughs> and she was like, No, no, we can go before. So we like went out and we had a great time. And like, I mean, like, I mean, like my mind was blown. Okay, like I and then I go to London. And at some point she stops texting me and then I get back from London and she tells me, she's like, so I like, I like, I live with my ex-boyfriend and I'm like, whoa, what's going on? (laughs) Right. (laughs) But I'm like, I'm like full force. I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm going to like win this girl's heart. And she's like, no, I just like really want to be friends right now. That lasted about a week. And I was, I was, I was just really adamant about the fact that um, I could totally win this girl's heart. And at one point, I asked her what her favorite flower was because I was like, "I'm gonna get this girl flowers." And she was like, "I don't know. No one gets me flowers." Oh. And I, I, I know. Which I was like, "That's fucked up." Can I say <laughs> fuck on here? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Great, it's, great. It's your, your show, rep. girl. Go ahead. It's your <laughs> I was like. I was like, that's fucked up. So, of course, like, I got her flowers, like, the next day or something. I don't know. And I, I like, wrote that line. Like, the, the song starts with, like, I asked you your favorite flower today. You told me you didn't have one because no one gets you <laughs> something like I don't know the word. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, like, no one gets them for you anyway. Um, and, like, I just, I guess I just was, like, I'm better than this guy and I'm better than the boyfriend. And then I was like, wait, this is like such a queer experience thing because I feel like, like even with like going back to eloquence, it's like that girl had a boyfriend, like, Mm -hmm. and I was basically writing that song about kind of the same concept, but not as like um, in my own sound. And so um, I, I guess it was just like, I was like, this is a common queer theme where it's like, I think a lot of like, I'm a lesbian. So it's like, I'll meet a lot of girls that are either straight or bisexual that are like so amazing. And then they'll just be with these guys that I am like, I'm like, why are you? Like, That's like wallpaper. Because, yeah, no, literally. Girl, you're dating like, wallpaper. Oh my God. And their names too are like, Tom or Brad or like, like they're the Chad. worst name. Chad, yeah, like literally, like we watch Love Island together, and like I'm just like, oh my god, Tom, like what is this? So I'm like, these guys aren't worth it. And I'm I happen to be like a really good wooer too. So I'm like, 
I'm like, what is going on? Like, how, like, how were you not even wooed? Like, let me woo you. And I was just like, so, genuinely so forceful. <laughs> like, but now, she, now she's my girlfriend. So it's kind of like, it all worked out. Well, there you go. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. What, a, what an amazing get together story too. <laughs> oh, you wrote a, a song story. about it. Oh yeah, I wrote, well, so it actually is like from this new record that I'm making called Ultra Desire, which is coming out in June, but it is like this, it's about like that string in like your solar plexus that gets pulled and like the real, I think like the, the concept of the album is that we all have this thing in us that's ignited by something, some type of energy. And for me, it's love. Um, but the idea of it is that, yeah, it can be ignited by this other person, but you don't necessarily need this other person to ignite it. So of course, most of the songs are love songs about her and just like kind of falling in love with this person. But at the same time, the idea of the entire journey of it is that like, no, you actually carry this. Like even if everything ends right now, you still hold it and like you can tap into that. So anyway, <laughs> that's better than your boyfriend. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Do you mind if we pause for a second and play a snippet for folks? Please do. I'm better than your boyfriend. I bet he doesn't call you and tell you that he cares like you know that I do. I'm better than your boyfriend. I bet he just frustrates you. Now that you got someone who really fucking loves you, I'm better than your boyfriend. I'm better than your boyfriend. I'm better than your boyfriend. Okay, that was awesome. I'm looking forward to the release. <laughs> I have you, you so flagged much. in my Apple Music so I get alerts. Yes. There you go. There you go. <laughs> yes. Now, your other project we need to highlight is your TikTok because oh, yeah. your promotion of the LGBTQIA community is phenomenal. And Thank you. you take on everything from people's serious questions to the jerks who don't need to have social media ever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I make and unfortunately, my girlfriend, there's a lot of them. <laughs> I yeah. Well, th this is what's funny is that I would get so many mean comments that I would make. I like me and my girlfriend made a deal that every time I get a mean comment, she reads it to me sensually. So now I like crave <laughs> mean comments, and I'll just like go over here and be like, I got a comment. You gotta read. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday was something like you have dead eyes. And she was like, you have dead eyes. <laughs> yeah, it's great. <laughs> oh, I love that. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> what though? Uh, so for folks who are just dipping into the TikTok verse, yeah. what should they know about your? Uh, do they call it a page? Your talk? Oh my god, I always call it my wall. I think because That's I'm fair. like, you know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm from that generation of face. Right. I throw it up there and let's see what yeah. it sticks. <laughs> yeah, no, I think okay, so what I mean, the thing that people really love on there is my reading of gay memes. Like I read <laughs> and it's funny because it's like I'll go out and I'll find them like and then like record me reading them, but it's all legit. <laughs> laughing like my best friend the other day was like these people are like this is a forced laugh and he was like this is your real laugh <laughs> and then like even when my friends are like watching the videos for the first time I'll be like laughing in the corner about how funny some of them are but yeah so I read I read like I read queer memes um which are really fun just because I love a good meme um Right. But mm -hmm, like then mm -hmm. I'll also like sometimes connect those and like promote my music on it. I think that I'm doing that a little bit more with this song because it would be so much fun to have like a trend with being better than someone's boyfriend. And I think I think it's something we should all talk about. It's something we should highlight that like there, right? are, there are assholes out there. <laughs> <laughs> and all all the queers are better quite honestly there's this one meme that i found that was like if if your boyfriend doesn't treat you right there's always a gay girl that will and it's, it's i saw you, i saw that on there yeah it's my favorite one yeah um but yeah so there's that sometimes sometimes i'll like go oh i love going to like different queer businesses that's really really fun for me because like also i i try to like do something with that where it's like you know, a lot of people get like paid to go places and like mm -hmm. highlight stuff, but I really, really try to like 
basically do an even exchange with like, you know, you give me your product. I want to promote your business. You're a queer business in New York City. That's awesome. Right. So we have like yep. a really good, um, I think, structure with that because it's like there there will be like an app that's like, hey, um, promote us. We'll give you this amount of money, which is like all well and good. But if it's like a queer business, I make sure that it's like like I and I always try to make sure people know that, too, because it's like I'm not going to like take money from someone I'm trying to promote to and also whose products I really like. So there's that. Yeah. You're doing what we do. We help the larger community find these. I mean, you're a discovery tool. You are providing discovery for people who didn't know these amazing businesses existed. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. (laughs) I have a question for you. Yeah. Do you find that... I mean, because one of my favorite queer artists is Jay Brannon, and I love him so much that I actually... I actually wrote a series of books that uses him as Amazing. my character has is a huge fan of his. But the reason why I'm asking is I, I want to find out what your perception is in this day and age yeah. for queer artists yeah. gaining exposure. I mean, do you find mm-hmm. it's still a, a, a problematic thing to sure. try and get out there or do you find that we're actually breaking ground now? I mean, you have lot, little That's Nas. That's a you great have, you know... question. Yeah. yeah. No, I so... mean, I definitely, if you asked me this two years ago, I would have been like, it sucks to be a queer artist. But it, like, I think, especially for someone who's a lesbian, it's like, you have an artist like Fletcher specifically, where it's like, this is someone who is now one of like Capitol Records, most mainstream pop artists who is like, Right. really gaining ground and I also think like I don't even I don't know if it's like her or like the team but it's like she definitely has kind of like changed the game for just like a, like being able to have a mainstream queer space I think because it's like a lot of the time like we have we we have our spaces we have our bars we have our clubs right. we have our places and we have our artists and most of them normally are not mainstream um and right. so i think it's one of those things where it's like they, like i know when she came through new york oh my god it was so funny like that whole jojo siwa thing with like whatever mm-hmm. was happening but i was like also you know equally experiencing that in my own life because all my exes went to that fletcher <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "Oh no, I can't go!" <laughs> and I like went on social media. And You're I was the like, only one in drag there. there. <laughs> <laughs> well, also, so her opener, Chapel Rowan, who I was going to bring up, who's an amazing independent artist, also queer, is coming through town. And uh, my girlfriend and I are going Tuesday, and I'm like, "I know everyone's going to be here." <laughs> and it's like at this small <laughs> venue, and I'm like, "Oh, this is going to be horrible." <laughs> so girl Um, you're like taylor swift the queer version yeah that's you know what that's great i'm oh i was i i've been saying machine gun kelly is a lesbian but i think taylor swift but queer oh my god the queer taylor swift i'm just saying because of all the exes you know i know you know what they're 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 few exes but they have a lot of energy <laughs> all of yeah, well, them have a there you lot go. of energy. Um but yeah, no, I think I think for in the past two years we've made like I think we've made good leaps. Um especially like I think I used to hate TikTok. I used to be like, everyone's on TikTok, I'm so against it. And then I had someone say to me, like, you're gonna get more coverage on I also so like I did American Idol this season and um oh. yeah. <laughs> It's, it's fine we can skip over it um, uh, okay <laughs> we don't have to talk about that but oh, okay that, i had someone say to me like you're gonna get more coverage from tiktok doing it yourself than you are from american idol and it's true like the second i started doing it it started like it was like a niche that also was um not lacking but it's something that i think like queer exposure it can always be added to and representation is so important and i think that like especially on a platform like tiktok like people are craving that content um Mm. and that's something so i don't know i don't know if it's because like in the actual world we've gotten any better at it but i think for sure like i found a space on tiktok being like no these are like the people that are interested in this content in this type of music 
But like, I also think King Princess said this really great thing. Um, they had this article come out. They were talking about like how if they were not as out, their music would be more popular. And I do <laughs> think, I do think objectively that may be true. Um, but also I don't think it's worth not be like, I, I try to, I really try to be, I, I mean, I joke about it because I'm like, I'm so out. Like every, like the first thing you learn when you meet me is that I'm gay. Like, but I also, I think it's so important because I was a kid who knew that I was queer and I was like, well, if I want to be in this industry, I just can't be queer. And then as I grew up, like I saw queer artists and I was like oh this is really awesome so I just try to like at least be like I'm fine with getting mean comments I because I really don't <laughs> I think they're fun <laughs> like I'm well, like it's reaching got... enough people to get mean comments <laughs> right right you've got um, someone exactly. there who helps you make them fun <laughs> Ex I got oh yeah <laughs> I got someone who helps me make them fun yeah so um I just think it's really important I think I think at the end of the day the music is probably going to be heard by a larger audience, you know, if it's in that quote norm of heteronormativity. But at the same time, I don't, that's like not the part of the world that I would want to be a part of. Right. Right. I mean, you, yeah. you were, you're addressing your own community and exactly. it's like Harvey Firestein said, I, you know, for once I don't have to translate what yes. other artists do, you know, oh, people in yes. our community, we get it. You yes. know, it's for us, you know, yeah. kind of thing. Now, as a follow-up, yeah. when you said you played London stuff, do you find that European oh, audiences yeah, they love it. kind of... <laughs> yeah, I was wondering they if that was it. kind of a different... Yeah, yeah. Well, they also have, so, like, a different talk mainstream. Talk a little bit about what that yeah. experience is like. Yeah, they have, like, a different mainstream sound, too. So a lot of the artists that I listen to, my favorite artist ever is Charlie XCX. Um, but <laughs> she's also a part of, like this group of electronic musicians who produce their own music, who also perform, but they're all a part of this like one label called PC music. And they, no one knows that. I mean, like not no one knows them, but like they're not really known in the United States. And I went to go see like one of their joint concerts in London, maybe like two years ago. And I was so excited because Everyone in the crowd knew every word. It was like screaming it. And I was like, this is my music. Like, this is the music I make. And now when I go to those concerts over there, people are like, oh, like, are you a musician? I'm like, no, no, no. Like, I make this. <laughs> like, it's the only music that I can be like, this is what I do. And there's like this girl in their, their group that like, you know, does what I do, but with sticks on a, a drum pad. And I use my fingers, you know, because I just, I got to show the talent. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, I know I'm ridiculous so yeah no I think I think in the UK especially they really like the sound and also I think like I don't know what I really like about the music that I've been writing right now it's like for me it's queer music right like better than your boyfriend is like a a very central queer it's a queer experience kind of thing exactly mm -hmm. yeah. but mm -hmm. at the same time it is in a way universal because anyone can be better than the other person's right. boyfriend like right you know so i don't know it, it's i do think though that it, it, it definitely has that like drive of like this like fervor that's you know alive and like part of the queer experience yeah i think I the thing that i love most about queer artists nowadays is that they have subverted the conversation in that, you know, it is that mainstream audiences have to figure out our music. Yeah. So yes. it's, the onus is on them. Yes. We're not caring. We're just creating and doing what we Absolutely. do. Yeah. But it's, but it's, you know, and if people find it accessible, great. Welcome yeah. to the party. But yeah. at the same time, just remember you're the guest in this house. Right. You know? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I really love that too. And I think also just in general with music as well, like I like a really weird type of music and I know that it's like, it's its own section in the music community. But at the same time, I'm like, well, if I like it, there have to be like at least 5,000 other people that like it. 
Like, if right. I understand a feeling, there have to be at least 5,000 other people that understand that. You know what I mean? It's And right. it's just about, like, getting the art to those people. Um, and then whoever also likes it along the way. It's awesome. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. You dropped a news bomb earlier that answers my next question and what you've got coming up. You've yeah. got an album coming out in June? Okay. So we have – there's a couple things. So – I, another thing, okay, so the other thing about what my, so my girlfriend's a musician, okay, we have been playing, and she has a very dynamic show, she plays a, she has a rock and roll band, she is, like, this show's insane, and it's amazing, it's the best thing I've ever seen, and we play joint concerts together, too, um, so, like, we'll both play, like, individual shows, and we'll do our own thing, but then we also throw, essentially, themed parties, um, and we do oh. have a pride party that's happening. Yeah, we have been given the Bowery Electric and oh it's wow. two floors. And so we're, it's called Gay Hell and you descend into hell and we go through the seven deadly sins, which by the way, one of them is pride, which is I know. so exciting. <laughs> um, and so we're, we have like five queer bands. Two of them are our bands too. And we're going to be doing different activities like uh, that have to do with the seven deadly sins. So I think uh, like Pride, where we have like a flash tattoo artist um, for lust. We have strippers. We're going to have go-go girls. We have lesbian DJs. We have queer businesses that are going to be selling their stuff. So that's 625. Um, but before then, we also have a show May 11th in Brooklyn. Um, the album comes out in June. I don't know the date yet. I'm probably going to put it around Pride. Um, nice. Yeah, and then I guess so Better Than Your Boyfriend comes out March 10th. I'm going to have another single come out probably late April. Um, and that's called Horny in London, which is hilarious. And it's about how she, this girl stopped texting me when I was in London. <laughs> and the best part is, is that like, <laughs> I'll play it at a show and tell the story and people will boo. And she'll just be in the corner like, I'm so Aww. sorry. <laughs> but it, it's, it's, it's a fun song. It's, it's a bop. It's a bop for sure. And then, um, yeah, the album's in June. And then I guess just more shows probably throughout the summer. Nothing's booked though past June right now, but... Nice. Yeah, there will probably be some summer shows in there. Where is the best place for people to go to get those updates, especially when you have like a release date for the album? Yeah, so that'll be my website, zoebrisky.com. Z-O-E, nice. brisk like the T, unaffiliated E-Y. <laughs> That's my thing. <laughs> there you go, there you go. I say it Brilliant. once every concert, and you gotta listen for it. <laughs> right, right. I love it. <laughs> yeah. And then obviously if they want to connect with you, TikTok's the best place. I mean, if you like want to actually connect with me, DM me on Instagram because <laughs> there's so many. Like, I'll go on TikTok. I'll be like, I don't know what numbers are. <laughs> like, the, it'll just be like 99 plus, and I'm like, I don't understand this. So, but people do. <laughs> I, and I always like go on live and tell people like, if you're trying to contact me right now through TikTok, it's just yeah, Instagram's the best place. Yeah, to, it's insane. It. Oh my god, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. But so, yeah, Instagram's probably the best way to connect. I'm Zoe Brisky on everything. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah. All right. Any final words of wisdom? Be you and stay gay. <laughs> That's what I think. Always. Awesome. It, yeah. it, I, I have a request. If you ever do that acoustic version with bagpipes, oh, I yeah. want video. That's oh, all I'm going to say. Easy. <laughs> easy i will like that'll even be like something that i pay on instagram <laughs> like i'll i'll like find like, give them the ten dollars they want i'll just be like shoot this out to twenty thousand people yeah totally i love it yeah there you like, go all right folks we'd like to extend a huge thank you to zoe brisky for being with us zoe thank you so much thank you for having me oh our pleasure and now on to our review Okay, Zoe was fun, and I love that energy. She was tons and of I fun. Feel, and I feel really bad dipping into a sad movie after that kind of fun. Well, you know, I mean, 
the movie that we're talking about or that we're going to review today is Spoiler Alert, which is based on Michael Asiello's uh, book, Spoiler Alert, The Hero Dies in the End. Um, it is a true story uh, or it's a story, a novel he wrote based on the events of his life with his partner and boyfriend. Um, I don't think they did they get married. I don't remember. They did at the end of the movie. OK, yeah. OK. All right. Yeah. Um, but anyways, um, so it, it deals with terminal cancer, um, something that is touching more and more people around the world, even if it's not personally, it's someone within your close sphere. Um, it is also uh, one of the things I will talk about when we get into what are we on about and who won the week. Um, because I think that what I have for our that segment is germane to this review. So um, I just want to say that I, I thought it was the production level was amazing. Um, it, it is it's a heartwarming, hard watch. That's what I'll term it. Uh, if you can have those two things mashed together that would be the way to classify it um it's everything good about people it is everything um tough about life uh it is the acceptance that none of us get out alive we all know that yet we do our level best to avoid our mortality you know, and this movie really kind of puts that in perspective. Um, it for me, it had definite Steel Magnolia vibes, not just because Sally Fields was in it, but also because it's a life goes on story. Yeah, and, and I remember when this happened to Michael. I, I used to actually, I was one of his readers on the back of TV Guide that that I would read <laughs> his articles, and so. I remember when this story hit and I remember being very touched by what came out of it and what he wrote about it. And I had seen the book and I kind of thought, Oh, that's an interesting topic for him to write about. Why would he write about that? You know, kind of thing. And then after watching it, it just, it was like, all of that stuff that I felt when I read about it going on at the time and his honesty mm -hmm. with what was happening, I just, I really, really, really um, felt connected to it because it felt like I was part of the story because I was one of his readers. So mm -hmm. for me, that was my connection to it. And save for the fact that I have my own cancer journey. My husband now is in the midst of his cancer journey. So it is very relevant. I could definitely identify with the um, the personal aspects of it, the relationship aspects of it. Um, you know, when we get married or when we become in a committed relationship, you do the for better, for worse. We always think of the better and we try not to think about the worse. However, mm -hmm. the universe tends to show up when we least expect it. And we have to deal and cope. And some people deal by running away. You know, that's part of the narrative. Um, and so when I see a story where that isn't the case, I think those are incredibly important, incredibly powerful. Um, I'll, I'll even add, you know, this is down to even people with pets. You know, I, I was with my mom. We had a suck pet yesterday. And we took them to the vet and we were um, probably about six feet away from a gentleman who brought his dog in who was older. Um, definitely you could tell that the dog had been around a while. Uh, wasn't didn't look terrible, but you could tell it was an older dog. Um, and it became very clear within the span of about an hour that the dog was going to have to be put down. And so you have these moments of mortality and I was praying when I saw it, when I overheard and knew where it was going, when a realization came to me, I just kept thinking, Oh, please don't run away. Please don't run away. Please don't run away because a lot of people can't face it. And I promise I'm coming back to the movie. 
um the the a lot of people tend to abandon their pets at that time because they can't deal with the loss but you have to understand these pets they you're all they've ever known and so it is doubly important that you're there for them when that time comes and i think as humans when we're in a committed relationship this that is the toughest gig you will get out of your relationship when that is handed to you and make no mistake even if you are in the most rock solid relationship you know you're there for each other it is very very trying to go through that kind of a journey and to try and keep your wits about you to try and keep putting one foot in front of the other um it, it's not easy but i think this film did an admirable job it makes me want to read the book um because i think there's a, probably a lot more buried in there that the film could only gloss over because as with most book adaptations they don't do every single page you know um All right. but uh, so i kind of want to read the book now um but even given that even if i hadn't read the book this is still going to be one of my all-time favorite movies because it is beautifully rendered beautifully acted um even down to the monosyllabic lesbian couple you know it's it just every every <laughs> element of it and you can tell michael is literally absorbed by tv land and story exposition because the inclusion of all these little idiosyncrasies i mean even down to the awkward christmas where one guy, male couple is toasting the best about the couple's house that they're at for Christmas and then finding out they're having relationship issues and they're in therapy and the awkwardness that's born out of that moment. You know, it, all of these little things that happen in life that create the trials and tribulations that we have to stumble around and be awkward about. And even like the first time that, you know, uh, they have that kit and, and uh, Michael have sex or attempt to have sex is awkward yeah. and weird. And, but it's so, it resonates with such humanity that I think that every person, no matter where, where you are on the spectrum sexually um, and how you identify, you can definitely find something in this film that speaks to you. That's just my full take on it what do you what about you uh well you covered the in the film part beautifully so i would just like to add a couple outside the film part things um one jim parsons uh my husband actually wouldn't watch this with me at first because he was afraid he was just going to see sheldon again mm -hmm. and i would like to say that jim's portrayal of michael is showing that he has some acting chops he was not sheldon yeah. he still handles neurotic very well uh but he was not Sheldon. Yeah, he was a different so flavor. If, mm -hmm. if, if you only know him that way, be prepared to see him actually showing you a different character. Um, so kudos to that. Two, Sally Fields just won the SAG Lifetime Achievement Awards, and she plays Kit's mother in this film. And she had the best reaction to a coming out to your parents moment ever. <laughs> She didn't freak out about the fact that she was gay. She freaked out that he hadn't told her. And her exact line was, what do you think we are, monsters? <laughs> I loved it. And I love I, I even I even love the, the father's like response, out. though. When he just said, no, we're cool. We, we were going to go to Woodstock. We had tickets. We just didn't go. <laughs> And I love that we're starting to see stories where the coming out is a non-issue. Right, right. Where, where families want to be included in our lives. Right. And that was amazing to me. Um, but also, like I said, it is a life goes on story. And the way it ends for me felt exactly right in a way I haven't felt about a movie in a while. So I enjoyed it immensely. I have already recommended it to family. Um, my family also has some cancer stuff going on. So I cautioned them on what they were going to see, but. I said, absolutely, this is a watch. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, I think I'll frame it this way. 
there are certain milestone movies that, you know, and I have a huge library. I've got close to, I don't know, 6,000 films now in my library. Huge, huge cinephile. But there are only certain ones that I can call milestones in my life. Mm -hmm. This is one of them. This has now been added to that very short list because of the way that everybody involved from production crew, the writers, the direction, the cast, the acting, the, the location shots, the every element was so obviously handled with care um, that it, 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 you know, it's on the level to me. It, it's like, I don't know, the, the gay Forrest Gump, the gay, um, you know, and I hate to, that I'm putting gay in front of it as if we have to separate it out because I think it's just as powerful, just as equal as those films. Um, and it, it speaks to the best of humanity, like I said, and that's one of the things that I took away from it. And it's definitely a milestone film. It is definitely uh, a movie that people should watch regardless. It's not a gay movie. It's a human story yeah, where, a where gay it's men just movie. happen to be part of the story. Um, and mm -hmm. and it's, it's one that I think a lot of people, especially families and people who have been touched by cancer, can deal with with those things. And I don't want to be down, down, down about, you know, all oh, this is about cancer because there is a lot around that. There's so much love around that, that mm -hmm. that's what the part that I'm saying, it speaks to the best of humanity. So yep. yeah, totally loved it. Um, I'm a little sad that it came out so late in the year that it probably didn't get the consideration for award season that it could have. Um, mm -hmm. because I definitely think the work was there, the quality was there. Um, and it's really interesting, Ben Aldridge, who plays the um, character who has cancer in the story, um, I'm watching a series with him where he's playing another gay character. So... Well, let's just get to our numbers, because, <laughs> I mean, I don't think there's any more that we can say other than that without turning this into a Hallmark card. So... Uh... <laughs> So uh, mine's easy, fives across the board. It's just, it's a beautifully rendered film. There, I could find literally no flaws in it. Um, I, I just, I loved every frame from beginning to end. Ironically, yep. there were a couple flaws that I saw. Um, so for me, production quality was a four. Things like the first time they go lay down under the tree, the presents are there at first, but then when both the heads are under there, there's no present anywhere nearby. So there were a couple completely continuity. unrelated to the story, but there were continuity things that my little brain went, wait, out of the story. Uh, script screenplay, I did give it a five, though. Beautiful, beautiful story, 100%. And I know it's somebody's life, so even amazed, more amazing that he shared it with us. Uh, sound lighting score, I gave it a four. It was exactly what it needed to be. It didn't get in the way. I honestly don't remember it, which is a good thing in this case. Um, art direction costuming, same thing. Gave it a four. Everybody was appropriately dressed for the period. There, this wasn't about costumes. This wasn't about big flashy, you know, drag queen costumes. So it was fine. Although the jock knight outfit of his coworker. <laughs> okay, that was a little funny. Uh, however, casting, directing, queer themes presented, all five is for me. In the queer themes presented, the other thing I would like to point out is it was a real relationship. There was love. There was trouble. They went to counseling. And showing a gay couple actually going to a marriage counselor is huge right now. Um, because right. I think there's a thing in the community where we're trying to pretend that that doesn't happen to us because we just got marriage. So kudos to them for showing it because it's a and reality. And for showing a therapist who actually took care with that relationship. Precisely. Um, but it also showed family around the men and how they came together and how the family was there for both their actual son as well as their son-in-law. I mean, it was amazing all the way around. So my personal overall is a five. Like I said, I have recommended it to others. There were just a couple little continuity things. I was like, oh, uh, uh, trip brain out of story for three seconds. Okay. I'm back in. Okay. Uh, so that's all we got for this one. Definitely check it out. Uh, recommended people, you know, people you love. 
So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. let's move on to what are we on about? All right, your son's serious. Mine is funny. Do you want to go first? Yeah. Um, so what am I on about this week? Um, it's in relation, as I said before, during our review segment, it's in relation to the subject matter of that. Um, my what am I on about is I am on about the uh, Biden administration uh, because it is a personal thing for President Biden having lost his son to cancer, um, to brain cancer. And it is something that um, he has made a priority and they have a whole initiative working towards really putting some solid, serious, solid dollars and research into closing the gap with people. We are so close to coming up with things based on MRNA and all kinds of different new immunotherapies that are targeted. Some are getting so specific that the drug figures out your specific makeup of your specific cancer. And so they're not just flooding your system with a ton of chemicals that just takes out even and can affects healthy cells as well as, you know, non one non healthy cells. So the targeting is becoming much more precise, much more laser focused. Um, nanite technology has even been talked about in these spheres, we are getting to an era where cancer may become a thing of the past. We're close, we're very, very close. And Biden's whole initiative on this cannot be cheered or sounded out and rung from the rafters as as much as it can. There, there's no limit to what we need to do about that to really get that pushed through. This affects everybody, doesn't matter if you're conservative, if you're liberal, if you're somewhere in between, it affects everybody. We all have been touched by it. So kudos to the Biden administration. Um, they also are who won my week. You? Nice. So what I'm on about is all about surviving winter. And by that, I mean, if you live in a place that has winter, you know that your soul can be What is this winter crushed. you speak of? <laughs> Shut up, San Diego. This isn't about you. Hey, if I was so, in LA, it would be. <laughs> uh, true. Very true. Right? Northern California got dumped on big time. Um, so in 2021, there was a contest in Scotland where they did a vote to name the snowplows. And there were a couple winners, including You're a Blizzard Harry, Brinestone <laughs> Plowboy, Spready Van Halen, Mary Queen of Salt, and On Her Majesty's Slippery Surface. Epic. Last yeah. year, Minnesota <laughs> came up with a couple as well. Cleopatra, Scoop, <laughs> There It Is. And I think those are the big ones. So this year, my city, Madison, Wisconsin, joined the fun. And we had our winners just this, like, two days ago when they were announced. Our city's ch- chief salting truck will be named Saltimus Prime. <laughs> we have a – Madison is riddled with bike paths. It's beautiful if you're a biker and you don't want to take your car to work. So we actually have a bike path plower whose name is now Snowby Wan Kenobi. And then a couple others were Seymour Pavement and – Dolly Plowton. <laughs> so that's what I'm on about because, again, to survive this crap where the environment is trying to kill you, you do anything you can to make it fun. And I will right. send Baz a picture of uh, Sultimus Prime's name being applied to the truck so he can put Excellent. it in the YouTube. Totally on about that. My win of the week, though, is going to go to Home Depot. Home Depot invested another $1 billion into raising salaries for their hourly workers. The all hourly rates at this point at Home Depot are being raised to $15 an hour or more across the nation. Uh, I do not know how that applies internationally. The article didn't say, but for such a major company to make that commitment to their employees is huge. It is. So I know we need to do better. They can do more. They could do more. <laughs> Because, you know, the profits are rolling in on that joint. (laughs) Well, yeah, but what they're doing is they're showing the places like Target that this can be done. And this can be done in such a way that the investors don't lose their Karen moments and have little shits about (laughs) how much money they're not getting. Oh, my God. Can I tell you, uh, uh, just to dovetail onto your who on the week and your what are you on about? 
I saw the most absurd Karen I had ever seen in my life. Two in real black person? Guys, yeah, two black guys were going around the neighborhood shoveling sidewalk paths of snow for their community. Just They started in front of their house and they just kept going. Nice. Got to this little old white lady and she came out and was upset that they were doing something in front of her yard. And he's like, are you serious? He goes, we're just doing this for the community so elderly people like yourselves won't slip, fall, step in. We're trying to make it accessible for everybody. She went so far as to grab a shovel and push snow from her front yard onto the sidewalk. I'm like, bitch, you know what? We're done with you. You, just, you need to leave. Wow. <laughs> Get out. Get out. <laughs> I would not, I would not have been able to control myself. I literally, I wish a Karen would come to me with that shit because she won't know what fucking hit her. <laughs> Holy so I'll cow. It out there. Yeah. I'll put a link to it. It was covered on TYT and I was like, wow, unbelievable. These, these guys just, just, you know, they started in front of their own and they just kept going. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what the hell? You know, it didn't hurt anybody. Nobody was paying them. You know, it, they just did it to help their mm -hmm. community and because they were black this one white bitch decided to get uppity about it and she was mm -hmm. like 107 if she was a day i mean the bitch right. was old i'm sorry i just i have no sympathy for her whatsoever um but yeah so i just wanted to put that out there that there are some good people in the world doing really amazing things and mm. we need to really stop the motherfuckers who walk up and start shit. <laughs> I'm sorry. We need to start being the anti-Karens and be out there and get in their grill and tell them yeah. to back the fuck off. So if right. you see yes. it, get involved. Yes. And my words of wisdom, especially based on the movie we just reviewed, go get your health checkups done timely. Yes. Um, take care of your vaccinations. There's more than just COVID to be vaccinated for, by the way. Take care of those. Stay on top of your health because we want you around. Because if you're listening to us, you're one of the good people. Yeah. Now, go follow Zoe Brisky. She's a hoot and a holler, but she's also a brilliant musician. Like us on the YouTube, if you would, please, and thank you very kindly. Baz, any final words? Yeah, subscribe, wisdom? please. Subscribe, mm -hmm. subscribe, subscribe. Any final words of wisdom? I said my final words of wisdom. I didn't know you had the final final. Be an anti-Karen. Be an anti-Karen. Get nice. out there. <laughs> All right. Written on the Edge is produced by Rogue Ravens Media. For our disclaimers, links to social media, our listen stations, or to sign up as a guest, visit www.rotepodcast.com. You can also use that site to springboard to our merch store and or our Patreon if you would like to help us keep rolling into the future. If you enjoy learning about these articles, like and subscribe so you get the new alerts for episodes. And tune in next week for your queer media fix. I know. <laughs> there's, there's the creepy. <laughs> I'm going to keep that in. <laughs> <laughs>